Good evening, Oasis Baptist Church. What a joy and honor to be back together to our online Bible study on Tuesday evening. Amen. God is good and worthy to be praised in the Lord. Amen. It's good to be saved by the grace of God. Amen. Praise his holy name. We'll continue to look at our series on the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Lord. Those have your Bibles. Will you turn with us, please, to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18 this evening in the Lord. Let's begin reading together in God's holy word. Amen. And be not drunk with wine, one excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Let us pray unto the Lord as his blessings today on the word of God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for being so good to us. Amen. For being so kind to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Once again, Lord, we can come together and sit at the table of the word of God. Lord, I pray that every year that hears your word today, that you'll continue to strengthen us, you'll encourage us, make us better people for the glory and the honor of God. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to look today in Ephesians chapter 5. We'll be looking at the life of a spirit-filled believer, amen, in God's word. I want to show you some things here from God's word about being spirit-filled in the Lord. We as God's people that are saved by the grace of God should be longing or desiring to be closer to God. I think we all agree on that today, that every child of God that's saved by the grace of God ought to be longing and desiring to be closer to God as a believer. We'll look today at our first one today, the Holy Spirit and the believer, amen. The Holy Spirit and the believer. Look with me in Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, Luke's gospel chapter 24, when you get there in Luke 24, look at verse number 49 of Luke 24, verse 49, and behold, I send the promise of of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem unto be discovered again. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye, ye in the city of Jerusalem unto you be endued with power from on high. We see here from God's holy word that these disciples were to stay in Jerusalem until waiting for Pentecost, amen, from power on high. We find that on Pentecost was a time of a spring harvest festival for the Israelites. Also in the New Testament, this was a day of the Holy Spirit descending on the disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's look at Acts chapter 2 and read more about this matter of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. When you get there, look at verse 1 through 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon it be, sat, sat upon each other. Read it again. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and, being, and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 4 again, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. The Holy Spirit came to fill or to abide with the saints of God here. They were the stay at Pentecost, amen, and they were to wait and occupy there until they got other instruction from the Lord. I believe that every born-again child of God or every believer has the Holy Spirit indwelling them when they get saved by the grace of God. But let me remind you this afternoon, child of God, every son of God is not controlled by the Holy Spirit in their life, amen. Let me say it again. Every saved, born-again believer is not controlled by the Holy Spirit in their life. 
I want to give you some reasons here and show you why there are believers that are not controlled by the Holy Spirit. Number one, reason men are not filled is because stubbornness and rebellion toward God. When we live a life of rebellion and stubbornness in our life, we will not have the Holy Spirit working in our life to be spirit-filled. You realize this afternoon, this is a choice, amen. This is a choice that we make, amen, and it stops God from moving in our lives as a child of God. The second reason is we have sin in our life, amen. We choose to stay in the place we're in, amen. We won't stop sinning, we won't confess it, we won't repent of it. And we stay where we are and hinder God from working in our life as a Christian or in our local churches as well. That's why it's so important we know that we have to be spirit-filled because it affects our relationship with Jesus Christ and it affects the work of God in the local church. The third reason today is resisting and grieving the Holy Spirit. Amen. Resisting and grieving the Holy Spirit. We choose to keep idols in our life, amen. That's something the main child of God today that if we put anything else before the Lord, doesn't matter what it is, anything before the Lord, it will stop the Lord from moving or working in our life, amen. We find that these idols will cause us to have sin in our heart, amen. Once sin is in our heart, amen, we begin to listen to the flesh, the devil, and the world, and will stop God from moving in our lives as a child of God. We find also how we resist the Holy Spirit, amen, and grieve him. We tell God, no, I will not follow you. I will not obey you. We must not tell God, no. Let me say it again this afternoon. We choose not to be spirit-filled in our Christian walk, amen. This is a choice, amen. We find also, number two, our second point today is the matter of being filled is a command to be obeyed. The matter being filled is a command to be obeyed. Look at Ephesians 5 again. Ephesians 5 again. Ephesians 5 and verse number 18 again. And be not drunk with wine or in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. He didn't say, well, you know, you can choose to be filled. You can try to be filled. This is a command by our Lord. This is a command. I think about the disciples and others like Stephen in the Word of God, child of God. They experienced a spirit-filled life. Church, this is not an optional, but a command. I believe that we in the church age have allowed ourselves to believe or been told by the devil that we can choose to follow the Lord on certain areas of our lives and other areas of our lives we can stop. But it will hinder us from being spirit-filled. Look at verse 18 again. And be not drunk with wine, one excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. It shows us these men and others that was in our time in the book of Acts and all through the scriptures, amen, these men and women that were moved and influence completely by the Holy Ghost. The greatest influence we can have today is the workings of the Holy Ghost, amen. See, when we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and help us as a child of God, I believe there's three things that take place in the life of a believer. Man, woman, boy, and girl that are saved by the grace of God, amen. Number one, they're, they're led by God. They have God's direction, amen. They hear God's voice, amen. They know which way to go now. They have God's direction on which way to go. Number two, they have the power by God, amen. Not only are they led by God, by his direction, amen, now they got power, amen. They have power to, to direct themselves to go and go and go. They got power to, to perform and do what God's called them to do, amen. It's a blessing to have power. Now, I'm telling you, there's a lot of things being done under the umbrella or the energy of the flesh, amen. We found them the three. They had a heavenly mindset, amen. Their focus, their theme, and their mindset was about heaven, amen. You can say, well, I'm saved by the grace of God. 
I'm born again. I'm a member of a local church and I love Jesus. But do you have the mindset from heaven and man and are you spirit filled? Let me say this. Just like the Egyptians in Egypt always had a Nile of water flowing with refreshness of water, amen. There's nothing like the Holy Ghost of God flowing in the life of a believer, amen. Just like a river, amen, that when water flows, amen, or when we taste water, it's refreshing, amen. There's nothing sweeter and better to know that a child of God has the Holy Spirit flowing in his life, amen. This is a blessing, amen. Look at John 7 this afternoon, amen. John 7. John 7. John's Gospel, chapter 7. When you get there in John 7, look at verse 38 and 39. John 7, verse 38 and 39. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because the Jesus was not yet glorified. It is a blessing to know that we have the Holy Spirit flowing in our lives. Amen. This is something that happens when you and me that are experiencing God, amen, and walking close to him, amen, that it's he's so close, we're so close to him and walking, amen, that he's leading us, he's, he's empowering us, and we have the mind of God. We must ask ourselves a question this afternoon as we look at our lesson today. Are you being influenced by God? His Holy Spirit working through you. If he is in you and dwells you, we ought to be, we ought to be filled by the Holy Ghost. That we can be influenced or impacting those around us, amen. You see, there are some individuals in life that they are game changers. That wherever they go, they impact others. I think about Joseph in the Word of God. No matter where Joseph went today or back then, he impacted and influenced everywhere he went. We must ask another question today. Are you spirit-filled? As a born-again believer today, are you spirit-filled? We must ask another question today. How is your relationship with God? You see, the more you, the more of God in your life, amen, the closer you get to him, the more you ought to be like him. The closer you get with him, you ought to be more like him. You remember that time when you got saved by the grace of God? You're just a newborn Christian. You're desiring his word. You're desiring his people. You're desiring his word. You're desiring to be around the man of God. You desire to be around the things of God because there's a there's a thirstiness, there's a hunger, there's a participation, amen, in your heart, amen, that you want God in your life, amen. And I find that a lot of reasons that we're in the condition we're in our lives today, we don't have a relationship with God. Not only is there a spirit-filled life, amen, a relationship with God. How is your relationship with your family? I'm telling you, when you are influenced by the Holy Spirit, there are things that we'll do will cause us to have sweet accord with God's people, God's family, God's church, and our relationship with our families. And I think a lot of the bumps we have and the circumstance and, the, and all these things we have is because a lot of times we're not led by the Holy Ghost. And I believe that one of the ingredients we must do as God's people today in our Christian walk, and even while this virus is around us, amen, is get connected to the Holy Ghost. If we get connected to him, things will go a lot better. We'll hear his voice, amen. He will lead us. We'll have power. And we'll have our minds in heaven, amen. Circumstances are going to be around us all the time. Current events are going to be around us all the time. Problems are going to be in our way all the time. But if we have him leading us and guide us as a child of God, life will be a lot sweeter if we allow him to have his way in our life. Amen. 
I believe that just like the believers in the time when Stephen was around and others in Acts chapter 2, amen, was what followed the Lord, I believe we need a daily filling of the Holy Ghost as a believer. The Bible teaches us clearly that every born-again believer ought to die daily. Every day you get out of your bed as a child of God, you ought to die daily in Christ. Be restored. Be renewed in him, amen. I want us to notice some things here in the book of Acts of how Peter was filled. I want to look at some scripture here in God. We'll look at Acts chapter 2. I want to look at some things here how Peter was filled by the Holy Ghost, amen. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. We'll look at our first verse in verse number 4. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Holy Spirit fell upon them and helped them as a child of God, they was productive in God's work, amen. They had energy. They had power. They was motivated to do God's work, amen. Look at Acts 4. Come with me to Acts 4. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And when you get there, look at verse number 8. Acts 4, it says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said of them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel. We see that when Peter was filled or engulfed by the Holy Ghost, amen, that he was able to speak boldly God's word, amen. He had confidence. He had a real assurance that Jesus was on his side, amen. Look at me again in Acts chapter number 4 again. Acts 4. Look at Acts 4 again. Look at verse number 31. Acts 4, 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. Well, they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. You see that, child of God? That when we come together as God's people and get connected as God's people, and we'll walk with God in our relationships with him, that we can be filled with the Holy Ghost when we, when we pray right and we feel the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the place was shaking. The place was moving. Look at the next verse. It began to share some things about what happened there. It began to, it began to share their things that God gave me, man. Their, their, their food, their, their clothing. They, they had a love. I'm telling you, there's something about the love of God that once he, he comes inside of us, amen, he calls us to have love for others, amen, and we were, we're filled with the Holy Ghost. And I believe that every day we need our cup full of God. If you're going to make it, <coughs> excuse me, this Christian life, if you're going to make it this Christian life, you got to be full of God. You can be full of self. You can be full of pride. If you're going to make it in this Christian life, we must have our cup full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why I stress the importance of daily Bible reading. Every day of your life, child of God, you need to get out of your beds and open up God's word for it can speak to your heart. Amen. Number two, I believe also we ought to be praying daily. The Bible says, Acts 4, that they prayed and the place was shaking, amen. You imagine when you get along with a bunch of God's people, amen, they for the Holy Ghost, amen, and the, the power falls in that place, amen. It was shaking, amen. We can shake America. We can shake our communities, amen, if we're for the Holy Ghost. I'll be the third thing we ought to have in our lives when our cup is full, we ought to be part of church functions. When we really get connected back to Jesus, amen, and our relationship with him is where it ought to be, we'll, we'll, be, we'll, be in the, we'll get connected and functionized with the local body of believers, amen. I think right now, since we're on, online and, and using all the other things for the service of God, amen, that we ought to 
be participating that we'll that we'll get together and hear his word, amen. He might feed us or be hungry and thirsty for God, amen. There's something wrong with people of God that don't desire around God's people, amen. Even this time we're living in right now, we need to get connected with God's people, amen. Listen to me carefully today. You cannot hear God's voice and be disconnected to his church and his Bible and a non prior life. Let me say it again. You cannot be connected to God and his church and his Bible and have a non prior life and say you're full of the Holy Ghost. You cannot be full of the Holy Ghost of God when you don't have a prayer life, a Bible life, a church life, a walk with God in relationship, and say you're full of the Holy Ghost. As I said again, we choose not to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The third point this afternoon. Every same person needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Look at Ephesians 5. And be not drunk with wine, or excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So every believer in Jesus Christ needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me name a few of those that ought to be filled. There's others that can be filled. I believe that the preacher, the pastor, or those that are ministering the gospel ought to be filled. Fathers that are husbands ought to be filled. Mothers ought to be filled. Young people ought to be filled. Bus drivers and laborers of the Lord ought to be filled. Why is that important, amen? It is impossible to serve well as a Christian or live for God or his purpose in your life without being spirit-filled. We cannot attain God's will unless we're moved out of the way and let the Holy Ghost flow through us, amen. We cannot attain his purposes, his plans for our life, amen, unless the Holy Ghost flows through us, amen. The local church needs every member to be spirit-filled. Look at verse 18 again. And be not drunk with wine, except be filled with the Spirit. Realize this Ephesian church here is addressing the believer Paul's addressing here. See, we as believers or members of a local church are lacking to be spirit for a local church, amen. And it's plaguing our churches, amen. That's why you have a lot of churches and places and even in other places, amen, that's full of strife, backbiting, jealousy, angry, and etc. because there's members of God that are saved by the grace of God but not sold out to God. There's many that are not sold out to God. We need the Spirit of God as a pastor, as deacons, Sunday school teachers, teachers, singers. You have those that will not join a local church. You have those that will not connect to a local body. Let me say again, when we refuse to obey Christ and obey his word, we're not spirit-filled. Everybody who's a part of the church of Jesus Christ needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost, amen. Let's move a little farther today. The world expects believers to be spirit-filled. Look at Ephesians 5, 18 again. And be not drunk with wine, one excess, but be filled with the Spirit. We find that Paul was addressing here that there's two comparisons. He talked about spirit filled and there's others that was excess drinking amen, or drunk, amen. We got to remember one thing. The world is full of sinners that are lost without Christ. And they will look at the way you walk before God, amen. They'll scrutinize your walk, amen. They'll scrutinize your talk, amen. There are those that are outside the confines of the will of God and the ways of God that are looking at your life, amen, as a Christian. Number two, we have a Christian walk is toward our fellow man. 
We ought to live our life that is influencing and impacting our fellow man. Our fellow neighbor there, man. That will know that you're a Christian by your, by your conversation, by your lifestyle, the way you call yourself, amen, that you love Jesus, amen. And I believe we cannot impact or influence a community or a world or our family members unless we're controlled by the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, we cannot do these things. The condition of being filled with the Holy Ghost, child of God, is, number one, there must be a confession and forsaking of sin. Come into Psalm 66. The condition is today for our child of God to have the Holy Ghost working in our lives, amen, is confession and forsaking of sin. Psalm 66, amen. Psalm 66. Look at verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So I'm not going to hear you. Other words, what he's saying here, child of God, is we must cough up known sin and repent in order to have God to fill us. Amen. God's not limited to filling us. He's not stopping to fill us, amen. But he can't fill us up and run our cup over when we allow things in our life that's stopping God from working. That's why our desires must be toward God. Isaiah 44. Our desires ought to be toward God. Isaiah 44. And verse 3. That's what the Bible says. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offerings. God tells us in the word of God there must come a place in our life that Jesus Christ must be first place, amen. There has to be a place in our heart and say, you know what? I want God so much in my life. I want to have the Lord in my life today, but it's going to cost us to the place to say, he's got to be first, amen. Number two, let everything go before God. We have to let God be first in our life, and we have to let God, everything go before God first. And number three, you must become thirsty. Just like an oasis of water, man, or a water fire, man, there has to come to a place where a man or a woman is thirsty for God. To be refreshed, to be renewed, or revived, amen. He must come to an end of himself that he's thirsty, man. Bottom line is, is how bad do you want God in your life, amen? For a man to get spirit filled, there has to be a place where I need God more than life. I need God more than friends. I need God more than anything. In other words, child of God, there's a price tag to be spirit filled. There's a price tag to have God to be close to him. In other words, you're going to have to be spiritual. To be spiritually minded like Christ wants to be, amen. We want to change our thinking, amen, our, our perspective about life, amen, that he must be first in our life, amen. There is a price tag to be spirit-filled, amen. As I said earlier, there's many that will not be spirit-filled. In order for to connect it to the Holy Ghost, amen, there has to be another level, amen. Salvation was the beginning, amen. Coming to church, just the beginning, amen. And I believe there's one key word we must have as a believer to be on that level that God wants us to be, amen. That's what we mean. We must get back 
to obeying God. So we live in a day where we say, you know what? That's not for me. That's for you. But long as we feel that way and act that way and, and sing that in our heart, amen, the Holy Ghost says, I can't feel you. And I believe we got to obey God. We obey his word. And as the preacher begins to teach the word of God and preach the word of God, we have to get back to the place of obeying the preached word, amen. And as the Holy Ghost speaks, amen, we have to obey. The question that we must ask ourselves this afternoon is, are you obedient to the Holy Ghost, amen? See, we have to realize this afternoon that if we don't obey the Holy Ghost, we're not filled. The secretness of the Christian life, amen, is to get close to Christ and have us flowing inside of our life, amen, that milk and honey, amen, is a life of obedience, amen. One word, obey. Last of the blessings of being spirit-filled. There are blessings for being spirit-filled. Look at Acts chapter 1. There are blessings of being spirit-filled. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive the power after that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Al Judea, and Samaria, and other most parts of the earth. There, are, there is power to be a strong witness, amen. When we're spirit-filled in the Holy Ghost, amen, there is power to be a strong witness for Christ, amen. See, the more we surrender to him, the more we walk with God and love him and follow him and obey him, our witness is strong, amen, in Christ, amen. Number two, there is power to live victorious in the Christian life, amen. When we learn this matter of being spirit-filled, we'll be victorious as a Christian, amen. Look at Acts 20. Acts 20. Acts 20, verse 22 and 24. Acts 22, Acts 20, verse 22. 24. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit under Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Say that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and affliction abide me, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. Paul was in the place in his life that jail, suffering, persecution didn't matter. Because he lived that victorious life in Christ, amen. We know that the Canaan life is a picture of a, a abundant life, amen. There's a lot of believers that are saved by the grace of God that does not live that abundant life, amen. They don't live that, they don't live that kind of life, amen. God wants you to live a victorious Christian life, amen. He wants you to shout the victory. He wants you to praise him. He wants you to, I tell you, you get so full of God, you'll praise him. You will magnify him as a believer. God wants you to live that abundant life here on earth, amen, as a Christian, amen. The Holy Ghost working through you, amen, to work this out, amen. And child of God, allow God to have his way in your life, amen. We're going to close reading Ephesians chapter 5 again in verse 18. Ephesians 5 and verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, one excess, but be filled with this. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for the word of God. Lord, we live in an age where we're doing things on our own. And I ask today, Lord, that we'll get back to relying on the Holy Ghost. And Father, I pray today, Lord, that the, we'll continue, Lord, to 
draw close to thee, Lord, that we'll live the life that you caused to be fought. Lord, there's many believers, Lord, that are not spirit-filled. They're making decisions and choices in life without you, Father. Father, we come before you, Lord, asking today, Lord, that you'll have us a heart to obey. Lord, give us a heart of confession and repentance, Lord, of our conditions, Father. That we can live that life that you call us to live, Father. We want to praise you and thank you. We want to give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.